This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Good evening, I'm Rebecca Dupree. March of the country came to a standstill this morning to commemorate the signing of the armistice. The South today has coverage from around the region, beginning at the Cenotaph in Dunedin, where the heavens opened just before 11am. Memories flooded back as if past conflicts had only happened yesterday. At today's armistice commemoration at Dunedin Cenotaph, a gentle rain began but became steadily heavier. However, it wasn't enough to dampen the powder on the 25-pound field gun, which fired on the stroke of the 11th hour, of the 11th day, of the 11th month. While this was an all-too-common sight and sound for ground troops, World War II veteran flying officer Francis Neville Selwood remembers the war in the skies. Selwood says even though it's many decades ago, he remembers the large numbers of people who never returned. I particularly remember, of course, the 55,628 men out of 122,000 who were killed in Bomber Command. But uh, then I think of all the men in the Navy and the Army and the other branches of the Air Force. It's, it's just terrible to remember, really. He says younger generations can learn a lot from the mistakes of the past. And while he believes World War II was a necessary war, he's not convinced the Great War was. RSA Otago Southland District President Jennifer Glover describes Neville Selwood and people like him as a Taonga. Oh, they're living treasures. They absolutely are, and it's an honour to spend five minutes in their company, and they give credibility to commemorations like this. She says it's important for all New Zealanders to remember the fallen and returned service personnel. It's very important to commemorate, um, commemorate Armistice Day every year because we owe it to the memory of those fallen, those who gave their lives, and to their families. Our older people, our veterans, their families, they rely on this. It reinforces that the sacrifice that their loved ones made wasn't in vain. The torch of remembrance has been passed to another generation, with young families braving the elements. And particularly with St Hilda's pupil Lola Garden, who shared her winning speech from the Cyril Bassett VC speech competition. At the coming down of the rain, we did remember them. Daryl Bazer, The South Today. The government may contribute funds towards the building of a convention centre in Frankton. The Queenstown Lakes District Council has granted Remarkables Park Limited consent to build the resort town's first convention centre, able to handle 700 delegates. Asked if the government would contribute to the cost, a spokeswoman for the Prime Minister said Mr Key stood by his comment that there was no particular reason why a private developer couldn't come to the government. He did not say how much the government might contribute. Researchers from around the country have gathered in Dunedin for an annual meeting. The, the 10th Otago Energy Research Symposium is focused on the future of transport and the hope will rely more heavily or less heavily on fossil fuels. The Otago Energy Research Centre held its annual symposium today. Researchers from Otago University and keynote speakers from around the country came to discuss energy and its use. Organisers say this year marks a milestone. The Otago Energy Research Centre has been going for 10 years now, so this is our 10th anniversary and so we've, we've um, made this one a little bit bigger than usual and we, um, we invite a number of keynote speakers from around the country and then also the researchers here at Otago um, give presentations on their research that they've been doing over the last year or so. The Research Centre has an overarching theme of energy transitions moving New Zealand's energy system away from fossil fuels to more sustainable systems. Jack says there has been a strong focus on transport this year. We, we held this symposium alongside a, another network um, called the Transport, Transport Research Network, also at Otago, and um, had a visit from um, the Ministry of Transport, 
uh, he gave a keynote um, speech about the future of, of transport in New Zealand. There are three main components of the centre's energy research, focusing on transport, electricity and heating. And Jack says they work with private companies to ensure their findings are put to good use. So one of the research projects that was presented yesterday um, had a partnership with Transpower. Um, we've got another project which is looking at the future of the electricity grid and it's got a number of lines companies involved in, in, in that um, work as well. There are over 30 primary investigators at the Energy Research Centre across 17 departments at the university. The symposium was a two-day event with around 80 participants taking part. Jack Conroy, The South Today. An Auckland-based fashion industry representative is in Dunedin selecting designers to appear on the ID Dunedin Fashion Week catwalk. Sarah Stewart is looking through the portfolios of uh, 23 applicants for the railway station show. She's aiming to whittle the selection down to around 15. The full collections will have 15 looks, while the capsule collections have only five. Stewart says the garments must have movement and be captivating for the audience. Chosen designers will be announced next week. The Otago Regional Council is warning dog owners to beware of toxic algae this summer. In February, two dogs died after eating cyanobacteria algae in the Kadrona River near Wanaka. Mark Price reports. There's a good flow of cold water coming down from the mountains at present, but as river levels drop and temperatures rise over the summer, the risk from toxic algae rises. Hi, I'm Mark Price next to the Kadrona River where two dogs died last summer after eating the toxic algae. A Kadrona is not the only river where there can be a risk. Toxic algae was confirmed in the Manuherakea River near Alexandra last summer as well, and the Regional Council says it would have also been in other streams and waterways in the region. The symptoms to look out for in dogs are lethargy, muscle tremors, fast breathing, salivation, twitching, paralysis and uncontrolled shaking, convulsions or frothing at the mouth. And this is the hazard, mats of formidium which are attractive to dogs. The council says dog owners should be cautious of thick dark brown or black mats that have a velvety texture and musty smell. And it points out some algae can be a human health risk and cause skin and eye irritation. I'm Mark Price for the South Today. Still to come on the South Today, tourism is booming in Southland and we'll take a look at Armistice Day commemorations in Wanaka. Emu oil has been used for centuries to support joint mobility and tired muscles. Also helpful for supporting healthy skin, available as oil or in capsules, go to www.silverhorn.co.nz to order emu oil today. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Southern Television takes pride in providing a wide range of programming. If you have concerns about our programming or feel that standards have been breached, please write to the address on screen within 20 working days of airing. Visit Broadcast Standards Authority website for more information on the complaints process. Yes, sunny Jim. Neck, shoulder, back, sciatica, pain specialists, innovative tools specifically designed to contour your grooves of depletion and excess muscle buildup. Sunny Jim. It works. The 2016 Dunedin Relay for Life will be held on the 19th and 20th of November at Forsyth Bar Stadium. The event will be full of fun, entertainment and team spirit. The Relay for Life is a 24 hour event where you and your team take part in walking a track to support local people affected by cancer. Hi there, my name is John Moyle and I am a cancer survivor. I had uh, cancer 10 years ago and I'll be all clear uh, in December this year, 10 years. So. It's a great accomplishment. The Cancer Society did amazing work in Otago and I've met some, uh, made some good friends and met some good people through that. 
Relay for Life is one of their major fundraisers for the year. And uh, I stress it's a really important building to hold behind it. It's great fun. And since I've moved into Forsyth Bar, the weather's not an issue. So get amongst it, raise some money, get your friends and family, workmates together, and get down and support the Relay for Life because the thing that Cancer, Cancer Society do for the people in Otago in the way of services, providing support for families and, and people going through cancer treatment. But we want to see you down there at Forsyth Bar, raising lots of money, having lots of fun, November this year. Hi, I'm Nick. This is my third relay. We've had lots of fun fundraising for the Relay for Life this year. We've been doing cheese rolls with real onion. We've been selling raffles and have a quiz night coming up, which we're busy collecting prizes for that. We've had so much fun doing this in the past years. Can't wait to do it again. Hope to see you there. It's not too late to join in the fun. Register now, relayforlife.org.nz. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489 2274. We need your help to rebuild our animal centre urgently. Please give a little today. Come one, come all to the Omaru Victorian Heritage Celebrations, a year to reflect on the intriguing world of medicine in the Victorian era. 16th to the 20th of November, www.vhc.co.nz for more information. Watch your seatbelts on for this one and rev it up. Thursday night is Motorsport Night. Proudly brought to you by multi-award winning Garador. Welcome back. The Upper Clutha now has a far more complete record of the young men and women who served and died in the First World War. The first shipment of a book correcting errors and filling in gaps has arrived in Wanaka just in time for its launch today. Mark Price spoke to the small group of historians behind the project. The memorial on the hill above Lake Wanaka has some of the names of those in the district who served in World War I, but now there is a more detailed and correct record in the form of a 277-page book called Courageous and Free compiled from information gathered over the last two years. I suggested we do a little booklet on the names on the Wanaka Memorial and the project grew and I'm not sure how it happened but we were asked to do a much wider area of the Okaklutha memorials and then we found names that weren't on any memorial so it just grew of its own accord really. Obviously it was a, a need that, that needed to be met I think. A display of some of the material gathered from newspapers, archives, diaries and letters has been set up in the Wanaka Library. The historians have been as thorough as possible, but do not discount the possibility there is more information out there. Uh, we started off with 33 names, and we've now got 48 names. That's of people who were killed um, and the returned soldiers, we've listed those. We started off with a list of about 80 names and there's 148 of those. So um, there's been a fair bit of trolling through old newspapers looking for names and connections. About 200 men and women from the Upper Clutha served during World War I from a population of only about a thousand. Direct descendants, there aren't that many because of course they were all young, unmarried men who went to war and were killed before they'd had a chance to have a family. And so they're usually the brothers and sisters of, of the men who were killed and their descendants. But they are so proud of their um, soldiers and they provided us with last letters home and postcards and photographs and wonderful things that um, made the stories come alive, I think. The first shipment of books arrived from the Auckland publisher in time for today's launch with more to come. I'm Mark Price for the South Today. Hotel and motel owners around Southland are happy to see their wallets growing. Statistics released in the last two weeks show an upward trend in visitor nights and spending in the region. And Venture Southland is doing all it can to keep the momentum going. The numbers don't lie. Tourism's been steadily growing in New Zealand, bringing nearly $35 billion into the domestic economy each year. Southland's also involved in this upward trend, comparing September this year and last. 
The number of guest nights in the region's accommodation is up 6.5%. Venture Southland's a regional development agency working with businesses to increase exposure and assist growth. General Manager of Tourism Events and Community says it's great to see businesses work to produce results. Anecdotally out there, you know, a lot of our operators and communities are seeing lots of people, you know, lots of camper vans, lots of everything, and um, that's definitely being reflected in the figures. Bobby says the growth is the result of many projects Venture Southland's assisted communities in. She says the next step is getting people to stay longer and spend more. A key area they're working on this is Curio Bay. So what they want to do is to manage the environment you know, really well as well because a lot of people going through and lots of sensitive things in the wildlife and the environment. But they want to build a heritage centre that will interpret the cool stories there, which is the Jurassic Forest and the wildlife and the local iwi story as well. She says even though it's great to see this positive trend, they've still not met the full potential of the region's tourism sector. They're working on making Southland seem more as a destination for Kiwis and international visitors and changing to suit the needs of the travellers. Just being able to evolve to whatever the different markets need, you know, because it's a supply-demand situation and, and for us I think it's also realising that the environment and the community is really important part of the tourism equation. She says Southland has a unique story to tell and it's all about finding a way to express that to tourists. Ruby Spink, The South Today. After the break on the South today, a day in the life of Dunedin residents goes on display and SPCA volunteers raise thousands. Emu oil has been used for centuries to support joint mobility and tired muscles. Also helpful for supporting healthy skin. Available as oil or in capsules, go to www.silverhorn.co.nz to order emu oil today. Don't suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician for Structural Muscular Emotional Body Work. Phone 03 4250 606 for all your pain relief. We need your help to rebuild our animal centre urgently. Please give a little today. Come one, come all to the Omaru Victorian Heritage Celebrations. A year to reflect on the intriguing world of medicine in the Victorian era. 16th to the 20th of November, www.vhc.co.nz for more information. The 2016 Dunedin Relay for Life will be held on the 19th and 20th of November at Forsyth Bar Stadium. The event will be full of fun, entertainment and team spirit. The Relay for Life is a 24-hour event where you and your team take part in walking a track to support local people affected by cancer. Hi there, my name's John Moyle and I am a cancer survivor. I had uh, cancer 10 years ago and I'll be all clear uh, in December this year, 10 years, so it's a great accomplishment. The Cancer Society did amazing work in Otago and I've met some, uh, made some good friends and met some good people through that. Relay for Life is one of their major fundraisers for the year and uh, I stress it's a really important building to get behind it. It's great fun and since I've moved into Forsyth Bar the weather's not an issue. So get amongst it, raise some money, get your friends and family, workmates together and get down and support the Relay for Life because the thing that Cancer, Cancer Society do for the people in Otago in the way of services, providing support for families and, and people going through cancer treatment, and we want to see you down there at Forsyth Bar raising lots of money, having lots of fun, November this year. Hi, I'm Nick. This is my third relay. We've had lots of fun fundraising for the Relay for Life this year. We've been doing cheese rolls with real onion. We've been selling raffles and have a quiz night coming up, which we're busy collecting prizes for that. We've had so much fun doing this in the past years. Can't wait to do it again. Hope to see you there. It's not too late to join in the fun. Register now, relayforlife.org.nz. Pregnant? Need to talk? 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. 
Call us now on 0800 773 462. Watch your seatbelts on for this one and rev it up. Thursday night is Motorsport Night. Proudly brought to you by multi award winning Garrador. Welcome back. A digital photography project by Otago Polytechnic students has gone on display. The images are a snapshot into the daily lives of Dunedin residents. And it's hoped that people looking at them a hundred years from now will gain a sense of how we live today. A Day in the Life was a book produced in the 1980s. And today similar works by local photography students emulates the same themes. It's an insight into a slice of history, a project that encourages people to step back and consider their city in a new light. Also in future, it'll really inform uh, people about the here and now. So they'll see the technology, the fashion of today, all of which changes over due course, even the, um, the demographic makeup of the city. All of those things will change in, in ways which are not perceptible over the short term, but when we look back over these photos uh, in, in future uh, decades, it'll make a real difference. The students spent a month planning their shoot day, giving thought to all aspects of society. Gable wants the students to realise their work can really make a difference once it's in the public arena. You know, for the most part, their photos at this stage don't get um, widely circulated you know, outside of their own social media circles. Uh, but this is a real opportunity to reach an audience, so they, they do respond very positively to, to that. It's the fourth time the Polytech students have documented the city and previous images are now in the museum archive. And the visitor experience manager says it's a great way to capture contemporary history. You know, in 50 years or 100 years, researchers who come into Toitu then will be able to see what life was like today. So it's a great insight into, into the world we live in. The 160 digital images are on display in the research centre of Toitu for the next year. D. Karen, The South Today. Otago SBCA volunteers have hit the streets for their nationwide appeal. The SBCA relies on funding from benefactors and doesn't receive any money from central government. And so far, appeal organisers believe they've raised between five and 10,000 in Dunedin alone. Lending a poor for a good cause. Over this week, collectors have been on Dunedin streets and in malls, helping to raise funds for the Otago SPCA. It's part of their nationwide appeal week. SBCA business development manager Kirsty Thompson says they have large projects to fund, and as they don't get any funding from government, they need all the help they can get. Uh, we, we don't receive any government funding for what we do, so we do rely on the public completely for generous donations to help us you know, um, go out, rescue animals in need. Our inspectors are doing a great job on a daily basis rescuing neglected, abused animals, you know, horrific situations sometimes and we just really need the public help to um, keep us going, keep that, keep that happening, all that good work. Thompson says in previous years many people have dressed up in animal costumes and some bring pets. This young mongrel Bill helped his human at Countdown and became a crowd favourite even late in his shift. <laughs> Not our inspectors, but we've had some volunteers that have asked if they can um, dress up as animals or, or whatever. <laughs> and um, it, yeah, it's good. It um, yeah, draws people in. Uh, and some collectors also like to actually have a dog with them, whether it's one of ours that's available for adoption or just one that's been adopted from us in the past. Um, it's always nice to have have some real life animals out helping collect for the cause. So yeah, yeah, you might see them on the street as well. The collectors on George Street, in Centre City New World, and in front of the central countdown, all reported a steady stream of people donating. <laughs> Kirsty Thompson believes they will raise between five and ten thousand dollars for the Otago SPCA. Daryl Baser, The South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on The South Today. Much of the country came to a standstill this morning to commemorate the signing of the armistice at the Senate half in Dunedin. The 10th Otago Energy Research Symposium focused on the future of transport and the hope will rely less heavily on fossil fuels. 
The Otago Regional Council is warning dog owners to beware of toxic algae after two dogs died in the Cadrona River in February. It's time now to find out what's going to be in the weekend edition of the Otago Daily Times and Craig Page joins us. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, we've got a hot off the press story for you. Just in the last hour, police have confirmed they've arrested two people in connection with the theft of a large number of firearms from a Dunedin home back in October. And there was real concern about that. It included military style weapons mm. and a lot of ammunition, but also included a list of um, other gun club users and, and what weapons they held and their addresses. So there were real worries about whose hands they were going to get into. Um, they arrested two people on the outskirts of Dunedin this afternoon. Um, but police confirmed that the, the firearms were stolen to be handed on to the criminal fraternity, so it's been a good catch from there to get those Ooh. weapons back. Mm. Uh, we've got more on our Delta and Aurora stories that's been going for the last couple of weeks now. Uh, we've got hold of a report that shows there's 60 high or extreme uh, public safety incidents that have occurred in the city in the last year. Um, so real, real worries there. Um, we've also had a look at uh, the state of other networks in other parts of the country as well in an insight piece, so plenty there to read. The weekend mix, um, we look at the growing tur tourism industry in New Zealand, but also concerns about the number of people coming in and the pressure it's placing on our resources. Um, Doc announced uh, a week or so ago that they were worried about the number of people using our national parks and maybe it was time to start charging them. So. Uh, that's another story worth having a look at and plenty on the sporting front as well with our sports lift out this week. That's all in tomorrow's Otago Daily Times. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Time now for tomorrow's weather. This weather update is proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorns Puff Plus. To the situation, today's depression will move away tonight and tomorrow with a colder southwest flow developing. It's going to bring a few showers. A ridge of high pressure though is due in on Sunday. Two towns in the southern area, some clouds uh, with a high of 13 for Balclutha, the Catlins, Gore and Lumsden. To the central and southern lakes outlook, uh, some clouds for Alexandra, Queenstown, Tiano and Wanaka, highs of around 13 or 14 degrees. And to the northern outlook, southerlies with showers clearing for Omaru sorry, and Timaru, both on 12. Just some cloud for Omarama and Twizel, both on 14. In Dunedin tonight, showers with an overnight low of 6. Tomorrow, showers clearing to a mostly fine day with south westers becoming light, 13 degrees. And on Saturday, and looking like the best day for washing day this weekend, uh, Sunday, sorry, sunny periods, light nor'easters and 15. And in Vicargill tonight, a few showers with a low of 6. Tomorrow, early showers clearing to a fine day. Cool south westers dying out in a high of 14. And on a Sunday, fine and sunny, a good day to put the washing out on the line with a high of 16. And that is news from around the south this week. We will leave you with some shots from the week that was. We'll see you again on Monday. Good night. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.